Hi everyone! Welcome to Soup Top Recipes. A lot of you got questions about Chinese ingredients. There are so much to talk about: <laughs> seasonings, spices, fermented product, dry ingredient, noodles, flour, and starch. Look what I got on hand. Honestly, I got lost when I started to make this video. Some of these I brought it from China. Some of them I purchased it in the United States.、Um, I know it looks like a huge mess. <laughs> That is because I have been traveling a lot, and I didn't really have a chance to organize them nicely.、Mm, this is how my suitcases look like <laughs> today. I'm going to focus on six sauces that you would definitely need for most of my Chinese recipes.、Um, I will cover what they are, use cases, brand recommendation, substitution, and storage tips. All the other stuff we're gonna talk about in another day. <laughs> so let's get started. First, let's talk about soy sauce because it's so easy to walk out with the round soy sauce. There are two general types. Dark and light. Both are made from fermented soybean, salt, water, sometimes roasted grain as well. The most common question that I got is what's the difference between them. The light soy sauce is thinner and much saltier. The label usually says shen chou or jiang you. It is often used as seasoning or dipping sauce. When the recipe asks for soy sauce. It usually means light soy sauce, regular like this one. <laughs> Dark soy sauce is richer, less salty, and slightly sweet. It is for color. Mostly, it's an optional ingredient. The label usually will say "lao chong." Soy sauce is like an all-purpose seasoning in Chinese cuisine. It brings a umami flavor, which we call it "xian wei" in Chinese. It's very salty, so in most Chinese recipes, it is like a salt replacement. You can use it in stir fries, noodles, soup, dumplings, steam buns, stew, anything you name it. How to pick soy sauce? First, depends on the cuisine. If you're making Chinese food, you definitely want a Chinese brand. If you want Thai food, you want a Thai brand. You know what I mean, right? The second is depends on your condition. Soy sauce does contain wheat in it, so you can look for gluten-free soy sauce if needed. And、um, if you need to control the sodium amount that you are taking every day, then low sodium sauce is the way to go. The idea behind low sodium sauce is that you use same amount of soy sauce and get the same amount of umami taste, but less salty. The most important way is to read the label. There are three things that you want to check. I have been saving this bottle for five months just to <laughs> film this video.、Um, let's see. It has preservatives on the list. You definitely don't want that in your soy sauce. The salt amount in this bottle is enough to keep the soy sauce stay good for a long time. There's no point of adding preservatives. Let's see this one. This will be the most common types that you will find in、uh, Asian market. It usually contains the flavor enhancer, such as a bunch of stuff right there. I can't even pronounce it. Personally, I think. This is not a healthy option, but it's acceptable. If you don't like it, I totally understand. So check this out. This is a naturally brewed soy sauce. As you can see, all the ingredients that they put in are natural. No preservatives, no flavor enhancer. Like this is a much healthier option for you. But it's not easy to find it in most Asian markets. Lucky for you today, I do found this brand on Amazon, and I'll put the link in the description so you can check it out. So these three bottles here, I would say this is the best one. Okay, now you have picked a good soy sauce. How do you store it?
Normally, I just leave it on the counter and the lid covered completely. Um, I have never seen my soy sauce go bad, so don't worry about it. It will last you a year or two. Brand recommendation. Just to be clear that I'm not sponsored by any company that showed up on this video, but if you do want my suggestions, there are two brands that I would like to recommend. First, the Pearl Gold Bridge, of course, and Kingland brand. I don't have a bottle for Kingland brand, but I have a picture. I'll put the link in the description as well, so you can check them out. The second important sauce, oyster sauce. It is made by slowly simmering oysters in water until the water condenses down. The flavor itself just so good. It brings up any dish to another level if you just add a little bit. Use cases. Oyster sauce is often used in stir fries like pepper steak, beef and broccoli, fried rice, stir fried noodles, Mongolian beef. I also like to put it in steamed buns, egg rolls, or dumplings, or wonton fillings. It's a great flavor to add it to vegetables too. It can be used as a dipping sauce or seasoning for meat marinating. There are so many ways to use it. I can keep going on for hours. <laughs> Substitution. If you're vegetarian or allergic to shellfish, you can look for vegan oyster sauce. It is also called mushroom flavored stir fry sauce. I don't have a store bought bottle here, but I do have a recipe for vegan oyster sauce. I'll put a video link in the description so you can check it out. How to pick oyster sauce. Basically, there are two different types that you can find on the market, regular and premium. Um, the difference between them is the percentage of the oyster extractive. Just check the label. If the oyster extractive is the first ingredient that's on the list, that will be the premium one. If the oyster extractive is the third or fourth ingredient on the list, that will be the regular one. The price difference? This bottle right here, $10. This bottle, $4.50. Um, also, the premium oyster sauce will have like a stronger safety umami taste. How to store oyster sauce? Put it in the fridge with the lid covered completely. It does get mold on it if you leave it at room temperature. Brand recommendation. For oyster sauce, you definitely want to stick with Lee Kum Kee brand. If you're on a budget, uh, this regular oyster sauce will do a good job. If you wanted to have a high quality oyster sauce, this expensive bottle right here, that's your choice. <laughs> I'll put both of the Amazon link in the description so you can check them out. Rice wine is another must have ingredient in Chinese cuisine. The label usually will say Mi Zhou, Liao Zhou, Hua Liao Zhou, Shao Xing Zhou. What it does is to remove any unpleasant smell of the meat. Normally, any brand of type will work for the recipe that asks for Chinese cooking wine. We use it for blanching, marinating the meat, making meat stew. Here are some recipe examples. We use it in sweet and sour pork, beef and broccoli, pepper steak, Chinese crispy pork belly, Chinese hamburger. There are so many recipes that need this cooking wine. <laughs> However, if you don't have it, dry sherry and light beer are good substitution. If you don't want to cook with wine, you can use ginger juice or orange juice. They will remove the bad smell of the meat as well. So it kind of do the same job that cooking wine does. How to pick a good Chinese cooking wine? Here is my tip. Just check the label. One thing that you don't want to see on the ingredient list is alcohol. Sounds strange, right? Let me explain. The good rice wine is made with fermented glutinous rice where the sugar is transformed into alcohol by yeast. So the original ingredients they use should not have included alcohol. If they 
did add alcohol in it. This bottle right here, just some alcohol mixed with flavor enhancer. You want the good rice wine that is made with the natural fermented process. Brand recommendation. I didn't find the exact brand on Amazon, but uh, there is another one that is um, produced by the natural fermented process. So I'll put the link in the description. Storage tip. Just keep the lid covered completely. Room temperature, it will last you years. I have never seen rice wine go bad unless you leave the lid open. Next sauce, Chinese black vinegar. It's inky black, aged for years. The label usually will say Chen Chu, Xiang Chu, Lao Chu. The difference between them comes from the way how they are made, but in general, they can all be used for recipes that ask for Chinese black vinegar unless the recipe specifically requires the type. Use cases. In northern China, you can't eat dumplings without black vinegar. Personally, I think it really adds lots of flavors to the dipping sauce. Besides the dipping sauce, I have used it in sweet and sour pork ribs, eggplant stir fries, hot and not sour soup, spicy wonton, and noodles. It's so good. <laughs> Substitution. Sorry, I don't know anything that can replace Chinese black vinegar because the flavor itself is just so unique. You could use regular white vinegar to replace the acid, but you won't get that specific Chinese taste. How to pick a good quality black vinegar? First of all, you want one that's from Shanxi or Zhenjiang. And also check the ingredients. Personally, I'll pick the ones that don't have food additives. A good Chinese black vinegar is made with fermented sorghum and glutinous fries, where the sugar is transformed into alcohol first, then into acid, and finally aged for years. You don't need preservatives because vinegar does not go bad unless you leave the lid open. You don't need color or flavor enhancer because black vinegar itself should have the natural distinctive smell and uh, unique woody flavor and inky color. Storage tip, just leave it on the counter with the lid covered completely. No sunlight directly, it will last you forever. Friend recommendation, of course I will suggest you the ones that does not have food additives. And this one is Zhenjiang Xiang Chu. I'll put the Amazon link in the description so you can check it out. Next sauce, Sichuan Dou Ban Jiang. It's a spicy, salty paste that is made from fermented board beans and lots of spices. The package usually will say pi xian dou ban or just simply dou ban jiang. Use cases. Sichuan people call it the soul of Sichuan cuisine. That is how important it is. I have used it in mapo tofu, twice cooked pork, homemade spicy hot pot base, Taiwan beef noodle soup. You can also add a little bit of this into stir fries. It provides some spicy kick and a unique distinctive taste. If you like spicy food, you should definitely have one of this in your kitchen. Substitution. If you don't have it, you can use a spicy chili sauce. You will ruin the dish, but it will taste different. Storage tip. If you use it a lot, put it on the counter, it will last you two months. If you don't use it a lot, put it in the fridge, it will last you six to eight months after it is opened. Amazon link. I'll put the link in the description so you can check it out. Hoisin sauce. This is another main stir fry sauce in Cantonese cuisine. It is made with soybean, sugar, um, sesame, garlic, chilies, a bunch of spices. 
The word hoisin means seafood in Chinese. This is a seafood sauce, but it doesn't contain any animal product. <laughs> hoisin sauce brings a bunch of flavors to your dish. I have used it in my oven baked chicken, picking duck, char siu, stir fry noodles. You can also use it as a dipping sauce, like a Chinese crispy pork belly. You dip a little bit with this. It just brightens up the food itself. So good. <laughs> Substitution. Unfortunately, I don't know anything to substitute for this sauce. If you know, please leave a comment below so we can all learn. <laughs> Storage tip. Put this in the fridge because it could get mold if you don't use it often. Brand and Amazon link. For hoisin sauce, I like to use Li Kam Ki brand. I'll put the link in the description so you can check it out. I would say these six sauces are must-have ingredients. Actually, it's seven because the soy sauce is dark and light. Anyway, if you pick them up with the regular items in your kitchen, like salt, sugar, cornstarch, you should be able to cook most of my Chinese recipes in my channel. Sometimes I do go deeper into Chinese cuisine, so you might need more stuff. Um, in the future video, I will talk about other staples in a different category like spices, dry ingredients. Hopefully, this video is helpful to you. If you still got questions or I missed anything, feel free to leave a comment down below the video and I'll try to respond to you. Bye!